court on bill number 191 slash bill slash sen slash 2l to authorize the president of the republic to ratify the multilateral convention on social security of the inter-african conference on social security suppress adopted in dakar senegal on the 27th of February, 2006, presented on behalf of the Foreign Affairs Committee by Senator Leke Besongo Akemfo Fini, reading. <clears throat> Mr. President of the Senate, dear colleagues, during its sitting of 9th of June, 2022, the Chairman's Conference, after scrutiny, declared admissible Bill Number 191-Bill-SEN-2L to authorize the President of the Republic to ratify the Multilateral Convention on Social Security of the Inter-African Conference on Social Security Suppress, adopted in Dakar, Senegal, on the 27th of February, 2006. This bill, already adopted by the National Assembly, was forwarded to the President of the Senate in accordance with Article 30 of the Constitution, in keeping with the provisions of Sections 33 and 47 of the Standing Orders of the Senate, the Chairman's Conference in its sitting of 21st of June 2020 confirmed the admissibility of this bill and entrusted it for scrutiny to the Foreign Affairs Committee. Your committee met for that purpose on 22nd of June, 2020. The bill was presented and defended by the Minister of Labor and Social Security. The deliberations took place in the presence of the Minister Delegate at the Presidency in charge of relations with Parliament. It emerged from the explanatory statement that this bill, tabled before Parliament for scrutiny, seeks to authorize the President of the Republic to ratify the Multilateral Convention on Social Security of the Inter-African Social Security Conference, adopted in Dakar, Senegal, on the 27th of February, 2006. This convention aims to protect migrant workers and better guarantee their interests in the area of social security. On the one hand, it affirms the principle of equal treatment of the migrant workers with nationals under the various national laws on social security. On the other hand, it enshrines in the domain of social security the principle of protection of migrant workers acquired rights or those in the process of being acquired. The adoption of this convention falls within the framework of pursuing the suppressed objectives, notably that of minimizing administrative, technical, and financial management weaknesses in social security organizations. Furthermore, the said instrument consolidates social and economic integration ties and promotes and streamlines social security systems in Africa. It also preserves the obligations under any convention adopted by the International Labour Organization and ratified by the contracting parties. Its ratification will thus enable our country, which for several years has been committed to social security reforms, to continue seeking to, to optimize its social security systems so as to align it with international standards. Similarly, Cameroonian migrant workers, their families and, where applicable, their survivors shall enjoy better social protection in the other signatory African states, notably concerning old age disability and survivors benefits, benefits for work accidents and occupational diseases, 
family and maternity benefits, sickness benefits. Invited to take the floor to provide additional explanations to the explanatory statement, the Minister of Labor and Social Security recalled that the Convention on Social Security of the Inter-African Conference on Social Security, CIPRES, is a control and technical support body for African social security forums. It has six main objectives, namely, establishing common management rules, instituting a permanent control system for the management of social security institutions, SSI, in order to streamline their functioning and better guarantee the interests of the insured persons, including migrant workers. Carrying out studies and drafting proposals intended to harmonize the legislative and regulatory provisions applicable to the social security companies and schemes. Facilitating the implementation of an initial and permanent training policy through specific actions at the regional level for the managers and technicians of social security institutions in the member states. Fostering social security and supporting actions aim at its popularization in member states. Instituting a system of support, advice and assistance to other member states. Continuing his remarks, the Minister of Labor and Social Security recalled that in his preamble the treaty establishing CIPRES enshrines the protection of migrant workers. It was signed by Cameroon in 1993, then ratified in 1995. Subsequently, the treaty was revised in 2014, and the revised text was also ratified by Cameroon in 2020. Indeed, the governments of the member states of CIPRES eager to guarantee effective social security coverage to all their migrant nationals have adopted the multilateral convention on social security of the conference as well as the related administrative arrangement. This important legal instrument of cooperation and liaison between the institutions in charge of social security in CIPRES member states confirms the principle of equal treatment of the nationals of the member states with regard to the social security legislation in each of them. The principle of maintenance of the rights acquired or being acquired by the nationals with regard to social security, notwithstanding the movement of protected persons within the territories of the member states. Derogation from the principle of territoriality the principle of single applicable laws, the provision of social benefits outside the country of employment, the consolidation of economic and social integration links in the suppressed zone. The government representative also informed that, to date, out of the 17 member states of CIPRES, only nine have ratified the convention. These are Benin, Burkina Faso, Central African Republic, Comoros, Congo, Mali, Niger, Senegal, and Togo. This multilateral convention on, on social security, said the minister, will allow our country to guarantee in the suppressed zone the social rights of Cameroonian workers in a situation of transnational mobility equal treatment with nationals, protection of jobs, socio-economic reintegration of migrant workers upon their return to their country of origin, the application of decent work to Cameroonian workers in foreign countries under the same conditions as nationals, the social rights of Cameroonian workers acquired in both countries in case of return to their country of origin. Concluding his statement, the Minister of Labor and Social Security recalled that the Convention proposes a mechanism for promoting social security for migrant workers at the regional level. 
to this end and given the interest of the multi multilateral convention on social security of suppress Cameroon, which is currently at the head of the Executive Secretariat, signed the convention on 27 February 2006 and has since then undertaken the usual diligences for its ratification, which would allow our country to make a step forward within the framework of cooperation with the other member states of CIPRES. During the general discussion opened after these additional explanations given by the Minister of Labor and Social Security, your committee members expressed concerns on the assessment of the reforms undertaken by government on the national social security system, voluntary insurance put in place by the SIF, and the evolution of this form of insurance in our country. Strategic access taken by government to bring the national social, national social security system in line with international standards. The number of Cameroonians working in suppressed member states and benefiting from the social protection provided by the convention. The state of the national legislation on the protection of the rights of migrant workers and members of their families. After our country's ratification of the treaty establishing the CPRES and before the ratification of the multilateral convention on social security subject of the bill under scrutiny. Innovations in the national protection system of the rights of migrants in terms of the implementation of the provisions of the convention the existence at the level of the Minister of Labor and Social Security of a classification of migrant workers and the administrative situation of these migrants, the fate of migrant workers in an irregular situation in Cameroon, the social security of workers in the informal sector, your committee members recalling that these workers must really subscribe to the risk coverage to which they are exposed, wanted to know the evaluation that can be made to date on the implementation of voluntary insurance in our country. The strategy put in place by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security for a wide awareness of the population in targeted by voluntary insurance. The social protection of children working in mining sites in the eastern and northern regions, the delays observed in the processing of retirement pension files. As a matter of fact, your committee members consider that people who are entitled to retire wait too long to benefit from their retirement rights. The social protection of workers in private secular education, where many abuses are noted. In this con connection, your committee members sought to know to what extent the ratification of the multilateral convention of social security will make it possible to better guarantee the rights of workers in this area of activity. To the Minister of External Relations, members of your Foreign Affairs Committee address concerns relating to the social protection system enjoyed by diplomats in general and Cameroonian diplomats in particular. The measures provided by government to ensure effective implementation of the provisions of the multilateral convention on social security at the level of Cameroon's diplomatic missions in other member countries of CIPRES. Taking the floor to provide answers to the concerns of members of the Foreign Affairs Committee the Minister of Labor and Social Security once again expressed his gratitude for the warm welcome and the positive remarks of the actions carried out by his ministry. Then, broaching the concern on social security reforms, he indicated that the changes undertaken are ongoing in the direction of an effective national system of social protection. Speaking about voluntary insurance, the Minister of Labor and Social Security recalled that 
Initially, only workers in the formal sector could benefit from insurance, which only concerned civil servants through the Ministry of Finance and workers in the private sector through the National Social Insurance Fund. Continuing, continuing his remarks, the government representative explained that in this contributory scheme, only Cameroonians who paid a contribution through salary deductions would benefit from social insurance. This system excluded a large number of workers and thus the voluntary insurance system was put in place to solve this problem by allowing all categories of workers, informal sector, agricultural sector, etc., to benefit from health coverage on a voluntary basis through which the monthly contribution is calculated. Created eight years ago, this insurance is experiencing an evolution linked to the number of members, 300,000, which thanks to outreach campaigns conducted by the SIF in the hinterlands has not stopped growing since the first year. These awareness campaigns will continue in order to achieve the objective set by the head of state to allow the greatest number of Cameroonian workers to benefit from social insurance. To this end, NSIF has just signed a contract with an organization in charge of going door to door as part of these campaigns to popularize voluntary insurance. Referring to a possible classification of migrant workers in Cameroon, the government representative indicated that to date, the national legislation is in force, with each state having its own migrant workers file where applicable. Indeed, before the implementation of the Multilateral Convention on Social Security, national laws were applied to migrant workers without any form of continuity in the benefit of acquired rights. The Convention aims at solving this problem by guaranteeing this continuity in the benefit of acquired rights in case of a change of country or in case of return to the country of origin by the migrant worker. Thus, for Cameroon and for the other state parties to the multilateral convention on social security, the objective is the protection of the rights of migrant workers in a suppressed zone. Generally speaking, the minister recalled migrants fall into two main categories, namely economic migrants and political migrants. In Cameroon, registered files are treated on a case-by-case -case basis within the framework of the implementation of the humanitarian policy prescribed by the head of state, taking into account duly ratified international legal instruments. Our country harbors a large number of migrants, about 500,000, who are not all workers and to whom protection is granted with the help of UNO specialized institutions. Reacting to the concern on the issue of child labor in mines in the east and in the northern regions, the Minister of Labor and Social Security recalled that this ill affects several countries in the world and governments are taking measures to forbid child labor and to punish those who will be found guilty of this crime condemned by various UNO conventions. It is in this same light that Cameroon, with the assistance of the International Labor Organization, ILO, has embarked on a program to fight against child labor. Concluding on this point, the government representative, however, recall that the contexts are different and the domestic chores assigned to African children and which are often unpaid cannot be considered as employment and are part of our culture. Concerning social protection for teachers of the private sector, the Minister of Labor and Social Security recalled that it is provided for by our national laws. Other categories of workers face the same problem of non-declaration and not being covered 
by insurance. As a solution to this problem, the SIF has put in place a software package to enable employees to verify anonymously to be sure that their employer has registered them in the employee's index published and that he or she actually pays his or her social contributions. Furthermore, controls can be carried out and any case of abuse that has been noticed should be denounced. There are also periodical controls carried out by labor inspectors who, though few in number, often go down to the field. Concerning delays in the treatment of pension allowance files, the minister said the situation has improved significantly. For some years now, allowances are paid one month after departure on retirement. It is incumbent upon the insured person to present himself at regular intervals in the nearest receipt center to carry out the usual verifications to ensure that the insured person is alive. In answer to questions addressed to the Minister of External Relations, unavoidably absent, the Minister of Labor and Social Security concerning the social protection of diplomats recalled that as public employees, they are covered by a social insurance, either according to the general status of the public service for civil servants or to the labor code for non-civil servant employees, while another category is covered by, by special statutes. Such is the case for military personnel in diplomatic missions. Concerning measures provided for the implementation of the Convention, the Minister declared that these are usual provisions taken to inform the target population and to make available the instruments and working documents in each state, signatory to the Multilateral Social Security Convention. <clears throat> During a second round of questions, members of your Foreign Affairs Committee sought clarifications on the following. Voluntary insurance and, in this case, the possibility for an employee to improve his retirement allowance by subscribing to another insurance through purchasing points. Measures envisaged by government to raise the guaranteed interprofessional minimum salary, SMIG, with regard to the constant rising cost of living. Conflict resolution between employers and employees. According to your committee members, the Minister of Labor and Social Security arbitrates very often in favor of the employer. Taking the floor to provide answers to these new concerns expressed by members of the Foreign Affairs Committee, the Minister of Labor and Social Security, referring to points-based supplementary insurance, declared that this form of insurance does not exist in our country. However, studies are carried out to raise the pension ceilings, which remain relatively low, particularly for workers in the private sector. Concerning the measures relating to the possible raise of the SMIG, the government representative recalled that eight years ago, the SMIG that was fixed at 28,000 francs has risen to 36,000 CFA francs to date. For some years now, negotiations that were engaged in a bid to increase the SMIG were interrupted because of difficulties faced by enterprises of various sectors to establish a common amount. Another problem concerns the issue of establishing a single SMIG or determining an SMIG per sector of activity. Reflection on these questions will continue within the framework of dialogue between the different parties involved. Finally, brushing the settlement of disputes between the employers and the workers and the arbitration of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, the government representative acknowledged that certain practices emanating from corruption 
and sometimes identified and subjected to severe sanctions. Great progress was, however, recorded within the time frame for the treatment of fires that were considerably reduced six weeks from com for companies that submit fires for the, for the attribution of medals and eight weeks for, medal for medical doctors wishing to serve, for example, as labor doctors. After these discussions, members of the Foreign Affairs Committee proceeded with the scrutiny of the sections of the bill under scrutiny. Sections 1 and 2 had no remarks. They were adopted as proposed. Having reached the end of their discussions and finding no divergence from the bill adopted by the National Assembly, members of the Foreign Affairs Committee adopted each of the sections in the initial form, as well as the entire bill number 191 slash bill slash SEN slash 2L to authorize the President of the Republic to ratify the multilateral convention on social security of the Inter-African Conference on Social Security Suppress adopted in Dakar, Senegal on 27 February 2006. They now request the whole House to kindly endorse their conclusions. Thank you for your kind attention.